I've been asked if I could um, tell a little bit about uh, angelic encounters and angelic missions. Uh, my own knowledge on the subject is relatively limited, but I'll share what I can. Um, the first thing which comes to mind, and this was also my first experience with an angelic being, uh, was me being told off for something I did. <coughs> I was um, involved in a, in a struggle with a person who was spiritually much more advanced than I was. Um, he had reached a level of enlightenment and basically I was getting energetically completely beaten up. Um, since I lacked the power and the skill to uh, defend myself um, and to stop this person, I um, sought telepathically contact uh, with a friend of mine who had in a previous life uh, been working together with a warrior angel. And uh, then I, in a way, took some of the uh, knowledge and skill which the person had been granted by that angel in that previous incarnation and used it in my own struggle. Um, this was very effective. I managed to uh, defend myself and strike a very severe blow to my enemy. Uh, so I had saved myself, but uh, as no sooner had I done so, as then that angel appeared and made clear to me that I had, in a way, broken a very important law by doing what I did. That what I did was completely unauthorized and I had no right to do such things in this universe. Um, and that, in a way, saving my life and saving my energy body really is not worth what would happen to me if I ever did anything like that again. So the angelic being let the situation stand as it was. Um, but yeah, it's made it obviously clear that um, any attempt to do anything similar to that would lead to my utter annihilation and yeah, that would be very much the end of me. <laughs> uh, not just of my life, but of my existence. So this was actually my first angelic encounter. <laughs> um, hardly a positive uh, experience, but a very memorable one. Um, one of the advantages though was that once I had well seen the projection of its energy, uh, because it did not manifest itself fortunately in its full glory, but it dimmed itself to appear on an astral level, which I could also perceive more easily. Um, when I visited a, um, a church, I also detected the presence of, uh, of an angelic being. Uh, it did not choose to reveal itself to me, but I could see that there were similar traces in the astral of how it had worked there with people in that church in the past. So apparently some people had received messages or the angel had inter yeah, intervened in their existence in some way. Um, several years later I noticed that these traces had completely disappeared, no new traces had come. So I take it that the angelic presence is no longer present in that uh, church. Um, so and then I have two more um, direct encounters. Um, the first one happened um, when I was in, uh, on holiday, I came to a place which had a great um, a spiritual and energetic significance. It was the birthplace um, of yeah, lots of things which shaped the history of our world. 
and this birthplace was also in a way where an egregore, which had yeah, precipitated these events, connected to our planet. It was an egregore which was already in existence on another solar system. It was invited to work uh, with humanity by inspiring the people in that place to yeah, uh, spread out and to get active, inspired by that egregore. But apparently, the, um, according to the divine plan, that egregore had served its purpose and it needed to be removed so that its influence would cease and humanity could follow a different direction. Um, but, well, as you can imagine, um, people get attached. So, humans, spirits who have built it up over hundreds of years, um, they really liked that structure, they believed in their way of progress, their way of uh, helping humanity to move forward. Um, and there were many greater powers involved, there were deities involved, um, there were yeah, even greater spirits involved in maintaining the presence of this egregore on our planet. But the divine did not agree. Um, so I was basically uh, ordered to remove this. Well, as you can imagine, I lack the power to do this by myself. Um, so I did my part and two angels did their part. And they fought and removed and pushed out all the powers which I couldn't. But being a human, being part of the human race, it had to be also my decision that this should end. And this is the odd thing, so like it's the will of the divine, but the will of the divine cannot manifest without, in a way, permission of the people downstairs. And also for me to give that permission, because anybody can make a wish, you have to have enough power, enough authority, enough understanding to realize what will happen, what does it mean, what is this thing which is being, which has been put here, which is this thing which is being removed. So I found actually that, yeah, for me, yeah, dozens of years of interest, of study, of reading books, ultimately gave me, apparently, the enough authority, enough understanding to be used in this way. And I myself had not realized why I had this interest in this you know, parts of history, why I was reading about it, and also after I had uh, finished my task, also this interest completely disappeared. There was no more desire yeah, from the divine that I should develop this part of my being because I had developed enough authority to perform my task. So I did not know I was being guided towards this moment for yeah, all my life up till then. Um, but yeah, when that moment happened, I was asked to yeah, give my judgment and to, if I could agree with the divine, that uh, it should change. And it's a very funny thing that you're being asked if you want to agree or not with the Divine. And I felt it was a very defining moment for me. Because ultimately we all exist here in the separated states as non-angelic beings because we disagree with the Divine on some level. We have our own ideas, our own desires, our own attachments. And this is why we have the freedom to do things our way instead of only following the will of the divine and doing nothing else. And at that moment, I felt I had that freedom. And this freedom was completely accepted, completely respected, and actually also considered valuable by the divine. And yet at the same time, I felt I was being asked to give it up, to surrender, to follow, to go back into the fold. Yeah, I cannot completely explain what, what that moment meant to me, but I'm still very moved by it. I get tears in my eyes. It felt as if 
um, I got a glimpse of back home, uh, of the heavens again. I was not pardoned, I'm not ready, I'm not pure, I'm unskilled and capable, but I was able to peer through the cracks to what it is like again and also to see the angels work with their utter lack of doubt they're how also in a way by being one with the divine they're also free from all their internal struggles all their internal striving trying to grow trying to develop trying to understand how everything is very perfect in that sense and how there is a perfect order in being unified again and how also these angels were working in perfect harmony like a, a musical symphony with what they each were doing and what I was doing at that moment it was a very heavy time it was a very heavy struggle because of course you have to give your all otherwise you would not be asked after that I had um, two linked encounters um, I went into a cathedral and um, there an angel told me that I should visit certain places and do what I could <laughs> to improve things there and the first place I went I felt I was relatively successful I made some positive changes I was able to most significantly um, I think release thousands of spirits which had been denied the possibility to reincarnate which had been imprisoned there um, so this I can see uh, because these were spirits of people who were very devoted to God, to religion in their own way and seeking to progress on the spiritual path but which had been completely halt, halted and trapped already for hundreds of years so there I understand the significance of the request and why also it was something which had to be done from a human level because it was a human mage who imprisoned these thousands of spirits. Um, the second place I had to visit I um, have to say I was only, my effects were marginal. Um, I think I did a lot more harm to myself than <laughs> to uh, anything which I would consider to be uh, to be wrong. Um, I worked a little bit with uh, trying to free um, also certain powers from other influences to grant them more freedom, more independence. Um, but I was utterly, yeah. Uh, I received too little support, I had too little power, too little strength and the backlash was uh, extremely severe and uh, I'm still uh, suffering from that. Um, so I came back to uh, ultimately report in the same cathedral on how these events went. I spent about a little over three years with preparing for these two trips and performing them um, well the only reply I received from the angelic being is it is done and well that's apparently it <laughs> um, so yeah if you're looking for uh, praise or feedback um, angelic beings are not the ones to look for uh, also not for understanding which are doubts because of course when you're given a great task you have doubts am I ready can I do it will I succeed will I fail uh, will I suffer 
and all these thoughts are completely alien to angelic beings. They only know one thing, the will of the divine, and there is no other will, there is no fear, there is no doubt, there is no uncertainty. Do what you must. And um, in a way this attitude has helped me in performing my own duties and uh, trying to see things in that way but they have that authority which tells them that what they are doing is correct but I do not possess that authority, that knowledge so I'm always questioning myself, I'm always fighting my, with my doubts and because of that I'm also weak, I'm also vulnerable and I can see by comparison also how my own doubts, my own weaknesses, my own uncertainties, my own impurities make me very vulnerable compared to such a being as an angel. Um, the presence of angels I still think is very uncomfortable. Uh, it feels very much like being burned alive or being sandblasted by their light, by their energy. It really erodes the energy itself is not only destructive but can also be used in a creative manner um, but then you need to be able to master it to be able to control it and when I had these encounters I was definitely not able to do so and um, from what I've seen of the, the bones uh, of many saints even they are not able to do so, they are not able to control the energy of an angel to become non-harmful to them. Um, so I'm not sure if it is possible for a human being to interact with an angel without coming to harm. Um, so I'm glad that my own experiences have been very uh, limited in the amount of exposure. Um, and that uh, I've often prayed indirectly for help or assistance from an, from an angelic being and I do think that by having had contact with them before and having behaved apparently in a way which is not completely disagreeable to them um, they have yeah, sent uh, some help, some support in, uh, in yeah, many cases when I have requested it um, but always it is a request I make I ask what is the divine will? Is it the divine will that I change something here? If this is the divine will, then to be able to do so, I can do what I can, but the things I cannot do, I will need support on these levels, and I think that these angels might be able to offer that support. And those angels will then send certain powers or certain energies or certain spirits to offer the necessary support so the will of the divine can be carried out. But always the essential thing is finding out what is the divine will. And I can guess at what is the divine will, but ultimately I have to pray to find out what is really the divine will. Because some things I think are terrible or horrible, they need to happen, they need to exist, they need to continue. And some things which I think are great or good or fantastic, they need to end. And ultimately, I cannot rely on my own judgment. I have to really surrender my own judgment to that of the divine. And only on that basis is it possible to yeah, ask and receive help from deities and from uh, angels and from other spirits within this divine cosmos. Because ultimately, the inspiration comes from high to low. An angelic being in itself, I'm not sure if they're infallible or not, but um, they have a lot of resources, a lot of powers. Their power is not unlimited, but they have the ability to request for whatever they need, for whatever is required. And it is basically this ability which makes angelic support so valuable that um, you can ask a friend to help you and a friend can offer what they have to offer. Maybe it's enough, maybe it's not. Maybe 
they offer something which is not suitable to the task. If an angel does provide support, you will get exactly what you need. Um, it will be enough. It will be also very focused, very minimalistic. Um, so the angelic support in itself also shows you what is your task, what is your role. Because everything which is not done by the angel should be done by you, can be done by you. And um, you might not be aware of your own potential, but the limit of, the, uh, of how much angelic support you get will show you what you can carry, what, you, what burden is yours and what burden is not yours. And this also gives you an understanding of what things you should try to handle, you should try to work with, and which things are really out of your league, out of your reach, and which should be left to higher powers to deal with. Um, so for normal matters I would not invoke angelic help. It's only when powers are involved which are way beyond the human scope that I would ask for such a power to support me or to help me. Um, so I've witnessed basically, yeah, you could say two angelic missions. One of them was basically to uh, inspire me to do what I could in these two places. And I'm sure that that angel which yeah, has been present for hundreds of years in that cathedral has inspired many other people. Um, and um, yeah, the other one was basically the direct involvement with the removal of an egregore. And all the greater powers and spirits involved with uh, that egregore. I have to say, even then, the uh, removal of the egregore could only take place at a specific moment astrologically because the energy had to go somewhere and in this case it had to go back to its own planet and this is only possible when the yeah, connections between the solar planets so the, the solar systems and the planets are in the correct alignment um, so even then Angels have lots of power, but they also choose or have to work at the right place at the right time. Um, so they tend not to interfere with the existing systems or the existing structures if it can be avoided at all. Um, I would say that the experience of um, an angelic being would best be done while not being in the physical body. Uh, both times I was in my physical body and um, a lot of the heavier energies in me um, yeah, boiled away by, by their presence. And in one way it was very liberating um, because you get freed of a lot of your memories, a lot of your karma, a lot of things, but you also lose yourself, you lose your power, you lose your identity by the presence. So it is a very purifying experience, um, but it should definitely not be overdone. And I'm thinking, I um, cannot be sure, but if I would have experienced them in a higher energy body, that's perhaps like there is a similar effect, but it would not have destabilized me as much as it did on the level of physical health.